there, this is Tony from Pianotone.ca. I usually review entry to mid-level digital pianos on my channel, so I've got a bit of a unique review today. I've been asked by uh, a lot of subscribers if I had any recommendations for a really portable keyboard option for piano players that are used to playing uh, weighted key digital pianos, uh, possibly even something as a busking uh, instrument. So one of the first things that came to mind was the uh, Casio CTS 300. As you can see, it's super portable, even has a built-in handle, runs on batteries, really, really light. So uh, I'm gonna uh, check this one out today. Uh, it also does have some arranger functions built in, and I will talk about those uh, a little bit, but I am gonna be focusing in this review on using this keyboard as a, a portable option for uh, piano players. So let's check it out. Okay, so a quick summary of the features on the CTS 300. It's got 61 uh, full-sized uh, box-shaped, so piano-style uh, keys. Uh, they're synth action keys, so they're not uh, semi-weighted, weighted, or graded or anything. Uh, three levels of touch sensitivity. It's actually two levels and then off. 400 voices uh, and 48 notes of polyphony. For effects, there's 10 different variations of reverb. There's also a quick access uh, toggle switch on the uh, keyboard for turning sustain on or off, panel sustain, if you don't uh, have a pedal. Uh, for connectivity, there's an eighth inch uh, headphone out port, which would also be your line out if you're connecting to external amplification. There's an eighth inch audio in, which is a nice feature. Uh, there's MIDI USB, it's a micro B USB port uh, for connecting to devices. And there's a sustain pedal input that's a quarter inch. There, there's a menu screen with a really intuitive user interface, 77 rhythms with uh, variations, optional accompaniment, optional intro and ending, and uh, six different uh, modes for triggering chord changes, which is kind of cool. There's a dance music mode, leave that where it is. Uh, there's a pitch bend wheel. Uh, there's a my setup, uh, which, which is basically a uh, single registration that you can save. So if you've got all your settings that you, the way that you like them, you can save one registration on this keyboard. There's a metronome, uh, the ability to transpose. Uh, the pedal input port can actually be used for a sustain pedal, or it can also be used for a sostenuto or soft pedal, uh, or more likely, if you're not gonna use it for sustain, you can use it to start and stop the rhythms, and then you can use the panel sustain. Uh, it does run on batteries, six AA. Uh, it has five watts of speaker power, and it is compatible with the uh, Cordana Play app from Casio. So just a quick video on the uh, user interface on the Casio Tone CTS 300. It's pretty intuitive and straightforward. You've got your power button, the volume up or down. Then your uh, me menu screen there, you've got uh, different modes you can go into. So rhythm where you uh, choose your rhythm and uh, your set your accompaniment, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, song is uh, to uh, play along with built-in songs on the keyboard. Then there's a dance mode. If I go into rhythm, then I can use either the dial or the plus and minus keys to choose uh, whatever rhythm I want. Once I'm done with all my settings in here, I can hit home, go back to the main menu. Now on the main menu, that's where I can choose my voices. Once again, I can use the dial or I can use the plus or minus uh, buttons there. Now the uh, start stop button, that's to uh, start and stop either the metronome or the current rhythm uh, that you have selected if you've selected a rhythm. Tempo is gonna be how you set the BPMs. Uh, this keyboard has a panel sustain uh, built in, uh, so if you don't have a pedal or if you have the pedal set to do something other than sustain, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later, then you can turn on the panel sustain and you get kind of a generic sustain. Uh, the My Setup uh, button allows you to save a current set of registrations. So for example, let's say you've chosen whatever uh, voices you want, uh, rhythm pattern, set the BPM, chosen a reverb, uh, all the different settings that you've got set up and you wanna save that so you can recall it quickly, then you can use the My Setup button to do that. There is, however, only one uh, registration bank on the, uh, the CTS 300, so you can only save uh, one combination of choices. The function button is how you enter the function menu, so that's how you can uh, transpose, edit the touch response, choose a reverb, uh, just uh, tell up a keyboard what you want the pedal to be doing, adjust the pitch bend range for the pitch bend wheel, uh, specify whether you want to have intros and endings uh, on your rhythms, uh, different chord modes. Uh, then you can also adjust a lot of the different relative volumes, which is a nice feature. You can adjust the rhythm, the, sound, the song volume, the dance volume. You can even uh, fine tune the keyboard if you want to. And then there's some MIDI channel settings. You can specify the, uh, volume, uh, the volume when you turn the piano on. Um, you can have auto power off. You can also specify the battery type, whether you're using a rechargeable or not. Uh, set the contrast for the uh, LCD screen. 
Now there is no quick way to select a voice or a rhythm on this uh, keyboard. Uh, you do have to use either the plus or minus buttons or uh, scroll uh, using the uh, dial. The dial is pretty fast, it's not the end of the world, but there is no quick way to go to voice 250 or something you have to navigate there. And there is also no uh, dedicated button to return kind of to voice number one to the default grand piano. You have to navigate there as well using the dial. But again, the dial is uh, reasonably fast, so uh, not the end of the world. Okay, the voices. There are a staggering 400 voices on the uh, CTS 300. 266 of those are divided into categories of piano, electric piano, chromatic percussion, so vibe and celesta, that kind of thing, organ, guitar, bass, orchestra, ensemble, brass, uh, reed and pipe, uh, synth, there's a lead and a pad section for synth, uh, Indian and ethnic. The rest of the 400 are composed of general MIDI uh, tones across similar categories. And the last four or five uh, voices are actually drum sounds so that you can play drums on the, uh, on the keyboard. Now the Casio CTS 300 unfortunately does not allow layering uh, sounds or splitting the keyboard into two sounds. So to, to remedy that, there are a few uh, kind of pre-layered and pre-split sounds included on the uh, Casio uh, uh, CTS 300. Uh, there's a uh, split with bass in the left and piano on the right, and there's some piano strings combinations, harpsichord strings, I think there's a synth strings as well. Uh, so it's, these are definitely nice to have, but it would have been uh, a really nice uh, feature if Casio had uh, added the ability to layer any two voices that you wanted uh, yourself. So in the upcoming video, I'm not going to demo all the voices because we'd be here all day, but I'll quickly go through some of the ones that I think a piano uh, player might be uh, most likely to use, like the pianos, the organs, the electric pianos, and a couple of the strings. And I'll also uh, do a couple of the, uh, the pre-split and pre-layered sounds. So let's check that out.
Okay, so for effects, the uh, Casio CTS 300 has 10 different levels uh, of reverb and as well as off. And uh, the reverb types include there's room one to four, uh, hall one to four, and stadium one to two. And those are all basically in an ascending order of more and more reverb. I should mention that in the voice de demo above, I did have the reverb enabled and set at uh, hall four, uh, which is a couple of levels above the default. When I first started uh, testing this keyboard, I immediately noticed that many of the voices, in particular the piano voices, had a really fast decay, and uh, even when the sustain pedal was pressed. So I did two things to help that. I set the touch sensitivity to light, which helped. And I also found that a bit more reverb really makes the piano voices and some of the other ones come to life a bit more. Uh, here's a quick sample of what I mean. Uh, this video shows the main piano sound and then the electric piano sound with uh, touch sensitivity on normal and the reverb set to the default, which is hall two, so a couple of levels lower. And then I'll switch the touch sen uh, sensitivity to light and uh, up the reverb a little bit to hall four and then maybe even the stadium uh, setting so that you can hear the difference. So the CTS 300 also has a panel sustain option, which basically just turns uh, sustain on and off as opposed to using a pedal for sustain. Now, of course, this removes the ability for you to uh, kind of finally control uh, your sustain and when the notes are cutting, uh, cutting in and out and that type of thing. But it also does free up the pedal uh, to be used for another function. You can use it as the soft or sostenuto, but more likely if you're not going to use it as a sustain pedal, you're going to be using it uh, for starting and stopping the rhythms uh, with the pedal as opposed to on the panel, which can be a little bit easier. And the fact that there's a panel sustain uh, makes it uh, a little bit uh, more of an option to be able to do that. So rhythms and accompaniment. The CTS 300 has uh, 77 rhythms with optional accompaniment, which includes backing bass and some kind of a rhythm section. A nice feature here is you can adjust the rhythm and accompaniment uh, volume uh, relative to your playing volume if, uh, if it's too loud or too quiet. Uh, that is a global setting, uh, so it's not uh, style by style. If you don't want the accompaniment, you can just uh, play along with the drum track and still take advantage of uh, the different variations. There's two variations for each uh, drum style. Uh, there's optional intros and endings, and uh, you can also insert fills as you go. The uh, intros and endings can be kind of long, so if you're going to use those, you probably want to get a little familiar with them so you can adjust your playing to kind of time things nicely. Um, there's also a recommended uh, one-touch setting available where you can choose a rhythm style and then have the keyboard suggest a tempo and voices and stuff for you. Uh, for triggering the auto accompaniment, most entry-level Ranger keyboards are going to have two or maybe three chord modes, they call it, which is uh, how you uh, different options for how you can play the left-hand side of the keyboard to trigger the chord changes. The CTS 300 has six chord modes uh, to choose from. Your options here include uh, four different fingered modes that include playing the actual full chord in your left hand, as well as some different shortcut options. Uh, where you can indicate a chord variation without having to actually play the full uh, full chord. There's also a uh, Casio chord uh, option that takes this shortcut even further, where you can play the root of a chord uh, for the major. So for example, just hit the C and that's going to give me C major. And then if I play the next white note to the right, that's going to give me C minor. And then if I, if I play all three of those notes, it's going to give me a C7. 
that might be an easy thing to, to do, but I personally don't like any of the chord modes that are kind of teaching you to do things that aren't going to work if it's, uh, if it's not the proper actual chord voicing. Uh, there are some of the shortcut modes where, for example, for a minor chord, you would play the C and the minor third. Uh, for a, or a major, you could play the C and the major third. That to me is a, it's still a shortcut, but it's a better shortcut because at least it's based on the proper chord fingering. There are a lot of uh, useful rhythms available. I was able to find usable rhythms for straight and syncopated beats, as well as some shuffle rhythms and even some useful 3-4 and even 6-8 uh, time signatures, which is cool. I'm pretty much a rock, pop, and blues kind of player, so I didn't investigate any of the other styles and ethnic beat options and things, but there's quite a few uh, choices in there as well. So in the next video, I'll go over how, uh, basically how the uh, choosing your rhythm works and uh, some of the different settings and stuff. So let's check that out. dance music mode. The CTS 300 has a dance music mode which will turn the left half of the keyboard into a DJ console of sorts. In this mode you can cycle through different options for each of four pattern phrases. So there's drums, bass, and two synths. And then insert any of four effects and you can even add tension builders. Uh, when you start this mode up it will basically continue to loop uh, while you uh, use the bottom uh, couple of octaves of keys to add in and remove these uh, different phrases and the keys are physically labeled for this mode so that's going to help and then you can use the upper uh, octaves of the keyboard to actually play this isn't really my thing uh, but it could be a fun feature for those inclined so here's a really quick video of uh, someone who is not good at mixing a dj console
connectivity. So for connectivity, there's one eighth inch uh, headphone port. This would also be the port that we'd use uh, with a splitter cable, most likely to go to external speakers or an audio interface or a PA, that type of thing. There's a very handy one eighth inch audio uh, in port so you can connect an external, external sound source like an iPad or uh, whatever to play along with YouTube apps. There's a USB to device port. Uh, it is micro B uh, and there's no cable uh, included so you would have to pick a cable up. Uh, to connect to a PC or an iPad to transmit MIDI data. And there's a quarter inch uh, sustained pedal uh, port. Now having a USB to device port is really handy for connecting to apps like Floki, Scoove, GarageBand. But since the CTS100 has touch sensitivity, this opens up another potential use case for this keyboard, which is a really uh, inexpensive uh, MIDI controller that actually has built-in sounds as well. Uh, a lot of MIDI controllers are going to cost about the same or even more than this uh, keyboard does and they don't have uh, built-in sounds or speakers, so it's another handy option. And then there's the sustain pedal port, which I mentioned uh, previously is actually configurable. You can use it as a sustain pedal uh, or a soft or sostenuto pedal or as a start-stop trigger for the rhythms. And since the CTS300 has that uh, panel sustain, that's probably the most likely use for that uh, port if you're not going to use it as uh, a uh, sustain pedal. Okay, some of the other features. Uh, the My Setup feature, this basically allows you to save one registration for easy recall. You can choose your voice, your rhythm patterns, the tempo, accompaniment, reverb settings, all of that kind of stuff. Get it set up the way that you want to and then uh, save that to your My Setup for a quick recall. Given how many options there are on the CTS-300, I mean, there's 400 voices and 77 rhythms, it really is a shame Casio didn't include even a limited number of registrations, but I guess one is uh, better than none. There is a uh, pitch bend wheel for those inclined to, uh, to uh, bend the uh, pitch of uh, whatever tone you're playing. Probably gonna use that with maybe some synths or, uh, or the guitar uh, kind of sounds. Uh, yeah, that is also configurable. So you can configure uh, how uh, many steps up and down the pitch wind, uh, bend wheel will go. Uh, you can transpose and tune the keyboard. Uh, you can transpose it uh, up or down uh, 12 steps. Um, I found, uh, given that I tend to play more on the lower end of my full 88 key piano, that usually when I'm playing this, I actually transpose down a full octave. It is a shame there isn't an octave uh, up or down setting, but uh, you can accomplish the same thing by just transposing down a full 12 steps. And you can also fine tune uh, the piano if you wanted to. Now for speakers, uh, they're definitely not the greatest out there, but uh, they sound pretty decent enough for only five watts. If you were going to try and use this for busking or any actual performance uh, type usage, you're going to need some external amplification, so some type of a keyboard amp or PA or something. I'm going to throw a quick video in here uh, just capturing the main piano sound on a basic lapel microphone that I'm wearing out of the keyboard speakers. And then I'm going to hook it up to my uh, Mackie CR3 uh, monitors that I use, my studio monitors, and uh, see how it sounds out of those. Cordana Play. Uh, this is a free app uh, available from Casio and you can connect to the CTS300 uh, to this app on your iPad or uh, device. And this has the ability to teach you how to play songs using kind of the falling note uh, Synthesia style interface, which some people really like. Um, I'm not really a fan of learning songs that way because it's a great tool for a uh, piano instructor to demonstrate something to you that they're trying to explain to you, but as far as learning a song, to me it's more like a hand coordination video game that really isn't teaching you too much of value, it's just helping you how to memorize to how to play a song. That being said, if your goal is to have fun as opposed to maybe learning how to play, then that's, that's great and enjoy it. Uh, there's a bunch of built-in songs you can play along with and uh, it does allow you to import uh, MIDI files for other songs into that interface. So that's actually a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool feature. Um, I have to admit though, I was a bit let down because I was hoping um, that it would also include some remote keyboard uh, control functionality when I hooked it up to the CTS-300 uh, and it doesn't. Any of the other pianos or keyboards that I've used that have some kind of a compatible app 
always include some level of uh, keyboard control to help you select voices, uh, reverb settings, rhythms, that type of thing. Something like that would really help on the CTS 300 uh, just to make it uh, quicker to, and easier to select uh, choices and maybe even save some configurations in there. Uh, I'm not going to bother demonstrating the Cordana Play app because there are thousands and thousands of videos out there that are going to do a better job of it than I'm going to anyway. So if you're interested in checking out the Cordana Play app, just uh, search that on YouTube and you'll find tons of, tons of videos. Okay, so the other options. I'm about to start listing a variety of other choices, but I should mention right out of the gate that there really isn't a lot. There's only actually one option in my list that's even close to the same price as the Casio CTS 300, and that keyboard's actually missing, in my opinion, a couple of really important features. So with that in mind, the CTS 300 is a massive value for the money. It's only about 150 US dollars. And to improve on it, you're going to need, need to spend uh, another 70-ish uh, US dollars to kind of get up to the next, uh, next level of, of features. Uh, before talking about any of the competitors, I should also quickly go over the other models in the CTS line. To be honest, the only other model in this line I would recommend is the LKS250, especially since the price difference between all of these models is really tiny. So the uh, line starts with the CTS-100. This one has uh, fewer voices and rhythms, no USB port, and no uh, touch sensitivity and smaller speakers. I would not bother with that. The CTS-200 is basically the same as the CTS-300, but without touch sensitivity. And for only 20 or so dollars more, you can get 300. So again, I wouldn't recommend that one. Unless color is important to you, because you can get that one in either red or white. Now the LKS250 is actually the same as the CTS300, it's about $20 or $15 more. Uh, it has a lighted key system, uh, which is a, a learning tool, so it uh, works with the built-in songs where the keys uh, light up uh, as you, to tell you what to play. It also uh, works uh, with Cordana Play as well, uh, lighting up the keys that match the falling notes. You can turn that off and on, uh, just so you know. Uh, but the neat feature about this one is that it also has a quarter inch dynamic mic input port with a separate uh, gain uh, knob. And that's actually something that would be really, really handy for you if you're thinking about this for a busking instrument, because it's basically one less port you're gonna need on uh, whatever your amplification is gonna be, because your uh, mic can be plugged directly into the keyboard. And you also get the effects that are on the keyboard as well on your, on your mic signal, so you get reverb. Um, for the uh, competitor options, I'm going to divide this into arrangers and not arrangers uh, in case uh, you really want the uh, rhythm backing or maybe you don't care about it. Other arranger options, uh, the Yamaha PSR E273 is the only other keyboard in the same price range as the CTS300. It actually usually sells for exactly the same price and it's also an entry level uh, arranger. This keyboard has some great sounds and a lot of the similar arranger features, but it's lacking two really big features. Uh, the keyboard's not touch sensitive and there's no USB MIDI port, so you can't connect to a device. Now, in my opinion, those are both pretty big holes in the feature set, so I would not recommend this keyboard. Even if you're okay not having touch sensitivity, um, not having the ability to, to connect to devices nowadays is, just doesn't make any, any sense to me. Now the next one up in the, that PSR line from Yamaha was recently released. It's the E373, which replaces the E363. It's about $70 US more than the Casio CTS 300. And that's not much when you're comparing a $900 piano to a $970 piano, but when you're adding 30 to 40% to the price of the CTS 300, it is pretty significant. For that extra few dollars though, uh, this keyboard does kind of outshine the Casio in most uh, categories. The sounds are a higher quality, in particular the main piano sound uh, sample, which was significantly upgraded in this model over its pre uh, predecessor. It adds layering, it also adds uh, articulated voices, which is where you can add things like harmonics to your guitar sounds, that type of thing. The speakers are a little better and a little bit more powerful. And uh, this keyboard has an audio interface built into the USB MIDI port. That allows you to record high quality digital audio uh, without an uh, external audio interface box. Now this is a really rare feature in expensive keyboards and digital pianos and virtually unheard of in this price range. You could connect this directly to your phone and record a video with a direct digital sound. So that's something to think about as well. Now it is a couple of pounds heavier, an inch longer, four inches wider, and almost two inches thicker than the CTS 300. And with the built-in handle on the Casio, the Casio is still insanely portable. 
So I guess the decision there might come down to, are you looking at this purely for fun and portability, or are you willing to pay a few extra dollars and sacrifice a little bit of that for some added quality and features? So some non-arranger keyboard options. Uh, the Yamaha Piagero line is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, they, Yamaha refers to uh, this line as piano-focused keyboards as opposed to digital pianos, and I agree with the description. I actually reviewed the NP32, which is a 76 key version with a graded soft touch action, and it is really cool, but it's quite a bit more expensive than the CTS300. But the NP12 is a 61 key version that just has kind of a plain synth action like the Casio does instead of the graded soft touch. It only has about 10 sounds. Uh, the sounds are probably a bit higher quality than the Casio, in particular the main piano sound. It's also got uh, layering and a single track uh, recording function. And it also has a compatible app to help you control settings. The NP12 is still, however, about $60 US more than the Casio. And given that the PSR E373, which is brand new, uh, is also about this much more than the Casio with way more features, uh, I would probably recommend either sticking with the Casio to save the money, or uh, if you want to spend the extra, I would look towards the PSR E373 instead. Now, a really interesting option in this range uh, is the Alesis Recital 61. I recently reviewed the Alesis Recital 88 key uh, entry-level digital piano, and it has semi-weighted keys. Now, they also make a 61 key version that also has semi-weighted keys. And while those are still not the same as playing a weighted keyboard, they're uh, a lot closer than the synth action keys are going to be. And uh, while the 88 key recital is quite a bit more expensive than the Casio, the 61 key version is only about $50 US more. Uh, and it's got 10 voices. Uh, the 88 key only has five, which is kind of interesting. It also runs on batteries. It's got actual left and right uh, line out ports, uh, so you don't have to use the headphone jack to connect to uh, external amps or PAs. It's also got 20 watt speakers compared to the five watt speakers on the Casio. So for busking or performing, you might be able to get away with just the onboard speakers now and then, although you will still sound much better out of uh, an external amp. I think the big thing here to consider is that the keybed is semi-weighted, so it is a portable option that won't be as big of an adjustment from a weighted key piano. So final verdict on the Casio CTS-300. Uh, the CTS-300 is really a massive value. Uh, for approximately $150 US dollars, you're getting a ridiculously portable keyboard, small size, low weight, battery compatible, and it even has a handle built in with uh, decent tones, rhythms, and accompaniment, uh, USB connectivity, so uh, you can uh, run Floki, GarageBand, uh, use it as a MIDI controller. It's got an audio import so that you can uh, play along with uh, sound sources from your device, uh, which is super handy. Uh, Full-size textured keys and a pretty decent uh, synth action. The only things I really wish Casio had included, which would make this keyboard uh, an even easier choice, would be the ability to layer sounds and to have some uh, more than one registration where you can save your current settings. But if you're looking for portability, fun, and decent sounds for a crazy low price, you really can't go wrong with the uh, Casio CTS-300. Now, what about busking and performing? Technically, you can busk with a kazoo if you're entertaining and put on a good show. Uh, so in that regard, why not? Uh, but that being said, you uh, are probably going to need some external amplification because these speakers are probably not going to be powerful enough and you're going to be limited to the built-in layered sound options, and you will face the challenge of not having a really quick and easy way to switch sounds and rhythms and modify their settings because you only have one registration available and there's no quick way to choose them. If you were to try busking uh, with this keyboard or with the LK S250 to take advantage of that mic port, you'd probably want to stick to two or three voices and two or three rhythm and style patterns that are close together in the menus to make the navigation a little bit easier. Now, if you're considering this instrument uh, as a first instrument for a young one to test their potential interest in music before spending a bunch of money on something fancier, it should be a great option. However, if the intention is to move into any kind of formal piano uh, lessons, it is really important to remember that you should either be getting them something now that has fully weighted keys, or you should be fully expecting to have to upgrade to something with fully weighted keys once the piano journey officially begins. The CTS-300 keys are fully sized, uh, but synth action is uh, simply not going to be appropriate for someone that wants to practice actual piano because they're not uh, weighted at all. So I have reviewed some really good entry-level weighted key uh, options as well that aren't crazy expensive. If you want to check out the reviews on the Alesis Recital Pro and the Anovis i88 or even the Yamaha P45. 
So with all that in mind, I would definitely recommend the uh, Casio CTS 300 if it fits in with uh, what you're after for a keyboard. If you want to check out uh, current prices on uh, that or any of the uh, other uh, items that I mentioned in this review, then uh, please click uh, on the affiliate links uh, down in the description. So thanks a bunch and happy piano playing.